I'm so deeply honored and grateful that you're joining me for A Fresh Approach to Painting, Gateway to the Inner Artist. A Fresh Approach to Painting, Caught in the Weeds 1. We're going to paint a vacation paradise. So often when you go on vacation, you take snapshots of beautiful beaches or places around water. This is your opportunity to let them influence you when you paint along with me. We're going to focus on negative painting and the balance of color around elements you find on beaches or in water areas. So we'll start with painting and you notice I said negative painting. Negative painting means you're going to have an object placed on your canvas and then you're going to paint around that object in order to create the shapes that you need. It's just that simple. We're starting with an orange canvas which you can find in your notes and your material list in your setup videos. So we'll just go ahead and start with one that's already painted orange. Now you can use bright orange, you can use red. I've decided to use a reddish orange this time. This is entirely up to your creative energy and what you decide you want to do with your painting. That orange will peer through when we're completely done. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up with a wet my brush. I'm using an angled brush. This is the angled brush that is featured in your materials list. So I'll pick up some hooker green and a lizard and crimson. These are our mainstays that we use to create a very dark background instead of black. You know you never use black because black is a dulling color. By using hooker green and alizarin crimson you're going to have a bright vivid background to your tree. So the first thing you paint are the fronds. So I'm going to decide how far over I want my tree. I'm going to put two trees on this canvas so I'm going to move over slightly into this area and start with my fronds. Okay, so you st I'm going to pull down, touch the canvas and pull down. And that is one side. Now you know your fronds on the, are larger on the bottom of the tree than they are on the top. So these fronds will graduate up to the top. So now I'm going to make sure I have a little stem. And then I'm going to go up from that stem and I'm going to make my frond on the other side. So this, you are setting the frame to your tree. All right, and go up again. You'll get used to doing this. This may take a little practice and of course you know you can always practice on a piece of paper before you get to your actual canvas. It's up to you. So you notice that I am actually creating stems before I create the, the frond or the, uh, the fluffy part of the palm tree. Um, this is a very important feature. If you were to take and make these fronds all come right out of that bottom, you'd end up with a helicopter instead of a tree. So we want to, this frame, I'm taking a little more time, but this is the important, this part, this is the foundation to your whole painting, this tree. Now I don't want to get too big, see how I'm getting a little bit large. I want to make sure these fronds on the top are smaller. And take them right off the canvas. So there we have it. These come right out of here and then these come out of the top portion. So there's my palm tree. Now once I've done with the top part, I'm going to I still have paint on my brush, so I'm going to now go down with a shape of a tree. Once I have my tree in, I'm going to make the bottom part of the tree wider than the top part. Because that's the way trees grow. 
There, that's one tree. Now we're going to go ahead and I'll move a little quicker here now that you know, we're both an expert at the trees. I'm going to again start with my fronds. The important part of this one is I want to make the frond go off the side of the canvas. So again, and this one also is going to overlap that tree, the first tree. So here we go. Now I'm getting up to the top of the tree. I had three of them coming out of the bottom. I'm going to move up slightly with my stem or stalk, whatever we want to call that, and then make my fronds at the top go right off. There we go. Now, second tree done. It slightly overlaps the first tree. It goes off the page. This is just added interest to your composition. And now I'm ready for my stem or my, my tree base. And again, I'm going to make that bottom part of that tree wider than the top. And I made this curl slightly slightly so that it's not a boring tree. Okay, there you go. That's the foundation now. Next thing, while we let this tree dry, that base coat has to be dry, I'm going to move over to the left side of my canvas and I'm going to make some rocks. I'm going to go up from the bottom of the canvas because I haven't decided whether I want those rocks to just to come off the front of the canvas. So I'm going to start here and with my brush, just at a different angle, I'm going to make a shape of a rock. Yes, I'm going to make go off this side. Alright, these are all decisions that you make as you're moving along. You can have your rock go off the side, it can be moved over slightly by making it off the side. That creates more interest in my composition. I need a small rock now. And this, placing this little rock here causes the viewer's eye to come from the left over to the right. It's almost like an arrow. So now you have movement. You have this happening. You have this happening. Wonderful. All right, all reasons why we paint, what we paint, and where we paint it. I've switched brushes to a wash brush. This is a little softer brush. I'm going to put in my sky. Now this is where the negative painting starts. The important thing is that the green is completely dry. If your green isn't dry, just move over to the left side of your canvas and start putting in your sky. Now, first thing to do is decide where is my light coming from. My light's going to come from this side. And I'm going to have so darker colors, darker blues on this side of my sky, and I'll have the lighter blue on this side. So I'm going to use light permanent blue. And I'm just going to start putting in the blue. Now, I'm not I'm not going like this. I'm not rubbing it in. I'm just loosely touching my canvas. When I run out of paint, this is an important part, when I run out of paint, I add more paint to my brush. I need to be working, not leaving globs, but I need to be working loosely and placing my sky in, leaving some orange while I'm putting the sky in. And by putting in the sky, what I mean is just keep touching that canvas with your paint. See how when it, when I run out of paint, it gets uh, transparent. I start seeing mm, more of a muddy color instead of my color that I'm working with. That means it's time to put paint on the brush. More paint. I'm purposely leaving my orange so I can see the orange peering through. I'm going to add now some white to this part. I'm just going to tap in some white 
Take it off to this side because, why? Because the sun's coming from this side. I know it doesn't look like much now, but right now you're just creating a foundation for your sky. It will look beautiful when you're done. All right. So now we're negative painting, and which is the whole premise of this type of painting, what you're learning today. That is going in, don't get too close to your fronds, and putting in some blue. You're going to leave some orange around those fronds. Yeah, and in other areas, you're going to actually touch the frond, covering up a little bit of the green. That is forming a shape. Now, I'm going to, since this right side is the darker side of my sky, I'm going to pick up some violet blue. And I didn't have to wash my brush. I know you're thinking that. Why didn't you wash your brush? But no, because I want those colors to mix right on the canvas. I'm not mixing color on my palette, which is typical for acrylic painting. I am mixing it right on the canvas. So I've got more blue on this side and that the violet blue because my sky is darker. I'm getting close again to my palm trees, so I'm going to be more careful and I'm going to touch the edges of my palm tree but leaving orange. Leaving the orange is the secret to having this look like the sky is peering through your tree. Okay, see how we're getting close? Leaving some orange there. So I'm introducing blue. Touch a little bit of blue over here. Whatever color you use on one side, you want to always just touch a little bit of that color around your canvas. That's a secret to fine art painting. There's always a balance of color, even if it's subtle. There is always a balance. Okay, so I'm going to continue that sky until I completely surround my tree. All right, and I'll go ahead and work all that blue in. And for now, I'm leaving orange all over the canvas, peering through. I'm going to switch my brush back to my original brush because it had that dark hooker green on it. And I'm going to lay in my water. And you're saying to yourself, why did she put that tree in and make it so difficult to actually lay in the water around the tree? Well, this is a, this is the secret to negative painting. You don't want the viewer to know what you painted first. And the only way to accomplish that is to actually paint around the objects or around the shapes as opposed to drawing a tree on top of your painting. Because if you do that, it'll look like you draw it, drew, it, drew a tree right on top of the painting. I'm going to um, pick up some phthalo blue and some white. I'm going to decide where do I want my water. And I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to draw a line. Now the fact that I have some white on my canvas or on my on my brush, it's going to naturally create some interesting water. I'm going to work myself right up to the tree and all the way across. Now I went down slightly. Don't worry about that. You'll probably do the same thing. I'm going to put some more blue on my brush. I actually turned my brush upside down if you noticed. Learning to handle the brush is an important feature of painting, especially this kind of brush. This angled brush, you can do so much with it. It's like a magic brush. You could paint 
thin small things and you can paint large things with this brush. So I turned it upside down, getting my line in there. I need to go up just a little bit higher. This does not have to be perfect. I've already thought about that in my composition. So I've got it just about right, just about in the same place. Turn my brush back and I'm going to use up the paint that's on my brush and make my water just slightly bigger. Now that I know where my water is, I'm going to move up slightly and now I'm moving a little faster just because I know where I'm putting everything. The same thing will happen to you too. Got a glob of blue. Don't want any globs on your bra on your canvas. So just pick up that glob. If you go over your tree slightly, don't worry about it because you are going to repaint your tree. This painting is done in layers like most everything else that we do in this Fresh Approach to Painting series. Okay, got my water in. I've got a slight variation of color now and that just all happened with the brush. And I can move back up to my sky. Look at it. Looks great. Maybe I'm going to tap a little blue into that sky from what's on my brush. Remember, I'm trying to add a little color from the water into the sky. I want it to be subtle, so I'm just tapping that color in. I am not actually painting an object with that color. I'm using up the paint on my brush, so I'm being frugal as well. I'm going to switch again. It's important that you stay in touch with your no tan because that would that remember that's your black and white image of what you're painting that will keep you focused on where your shapes are if you feel like you're losing yourself in the painting just go right back to that no tan i even have a thumbnail in all your paperwork so you can look and the thumbnail gives you the gray areas but for now i'm just asking you to look at your no tan are your shapes coming along? Where are the lights and where are the darks? I need to have the water dry thoroughly, which is the secret to this painting and the sky. But um, So I'm going to switch and move to the beach. Now our beach is very simple. We're going to use Naples Yellow, of course a wet brush, and we're just going to, we're going to paint it in under our water. I'm not going to touch my water because my water is still a bit wet. I'm going to come up to my tree because my tree is now dry. I'm going to come close, but I'm not going to touch that water. I'll show you what we're going to do to pull those two together. But for now, you want to get a nice, healthy amount of Naples Yellow onto your canvas, go all the way across. See, it just touched that blue. We don't want to do that because it will make mud. Remember what we talked about in the color portion of our setup videos. Don't mix the orange and the blue while wet. You can put them side by side and they make the painting spectacular. But if you mix them while they're wet, you're going to end up with mud. So here we have it. We're putting in our Naples Yellow and the part closest to the water is Naples Yellow. I'm going to pick up now some Portrait Pink and put the Portrait Pink in closer to the foreground. We're in the foreground now, closer to the front of the foreground. We're going to come all the way off the canvas with our portrait pink. Now go back in and fill in these areas with the Naples yellow. So when this dries, your beach is going to look light and dark in areas, but with that nice warm pink. So you're probably wondering, how are you going to connect that water to the sky? 
this is what we're going to do next. I'm going to pick up some Brilliant Blue with a square brush. This is my wash brush that I was using earlier. And I'm going to make a series of vertical marks all the way across my painting. This is connecting my water with my sky. You can see these vertical shapes are going to look like squares. Now I'm running out of paint. Just pick up some more. Make a series of vertical marks all the way across the painting. I'm doing this with brilliant blue. It's a little deeper blue than my sky. Coming right up to my trees. Now just because I have this open area doesn't mean I'm going to take those vertical um, marks up into the sky. I do need to add some more of the blue and then I've added in some violet in my sky on this side. I don't have to clean my brush because I'm using the same colors. So I'm going to pick up some of my light permanent and go back to the different shapes. Getting close to my tree. Not doing vertical marks here because I'm back in my sky. And pick up the color. And fill in my sky. So I've got a nice collection of vertical marks across from left to right on this canvas. Now I'm going to take and make a Another row with a slightly lighter color. That's my light permanent blue. So I can create the illusion of layers. Pick up some white now and do the same thing. So my white is closest to the horizon line. Your horizon line the area just above the horizon line tends to be just a bit lighter. Okay, I'm leaving this area darker because it's under my tree and the tree is a shadow on that area. Even though this, these, what we're going to call buildings are in the distance, they're still a little darker on the right side of the painting because that's where my sun isn't. Now I'm going to switch brushes to a little smaller still square brush or rectangular brush. Use the one that you have. And I'm going to pick up some white and I am going to make some smaller marks. Same exact vertical marks all the way across that painting. Okay, let that dry. And I'm going to move into my water. Pick up some white. Now draw, well, I'm not going to say draw, but make a mark, a, a straight horizontal mark. Water is horizontal. Water does not go like this. It, you know, and that's a tendency when you're painting water or if you're just beginning to paint water, you want to make those waves in there. No. Um, go ahead and make a horizontal line. But again, you're mark making. You're not drawing in water with a smaller brush. I got a little bit too much here in between my trees. That's okay. I'm going to pick up some halo blue and I'm going to just move my arm across that 
area that I added the water. And it's going to give me a variegated shape, which will eventually look like a wave. Pick up some phthalo blue, and I'm going to cover. I've turned my brush on an, a different angle. You just keep turning your brush in different angles until you get exactly what you want. And I'm going to wet my brush up now, not without adding any more paint. I'm just going to move my arm across that dark water. And there you have it. You're, you have water with waves. Well, it's a simple, simple way to do water. Now the next step, of course, we are going to add more layers. So layer after layer is going to give you a finished product. I'm going to now, I'm going to connect the beach with the water. And how I do that is I wet my brush up. I keep that little bit of phthalo blue from the ocean, from the water, and I'm going to do my Z stroke. So remember the Z stroke is go to the left, back to the right. Over to the left, lift your brush up, back to your right. You're not, you're not, you're not doing like a um, infinity sign. You're not doing a Z completely. You're doing the Z stroke and the Z stroke is moving, move to the left, lift your hand up, and then touch down. Of course, these are long Z strokes. And I'm going to go all the way across that area. So now I've connected my water or my beach to the water. And I did that with the phthalo blue. I'm going to come back and do that with the white later. So right now, I need to have that background of the foam on the beach. While I'm letting my middle ground dry, I'm going to go back to my trees. You notice we move around the canvas quite a bit. I'm going to pick up some of my hooker green and some cadmium yellow. This is going to make a slightly lighter green color. And I'm going to go over these dark areas. I'm not going to cover them completely. I'm just going to pull my hand down and cover some, which just naturally covers some by using that stroke of the original fronds. Okay, so you see how I'm doing this? I'm pulling, pulling, slight, just, I'm purposely not covering up my dark background because I want that to show through. That's what's going to give me my three-dimensional image, making my trees come alive. Okay, so, what I'd like to do now is add a little bit of yellow. I'm going to pick up some Naples yellow. I've got my medium-sized brush, and I'm going to just run some Naples yellow in horizontal lines across the bottom of my buildings and just above my water. A little bit of Naples yellow and a little bit of white because the skyline is a little bit lighter as we get close to the horizon line. Try to keep my hand just as straight as I can, but don't be stressed. You, it's going to all be perfect, even if your hand is not perfectly straight or still. Say. Okay, so now I've got my horizontal line just above my water. I'm going to go back in with some white. That same brush is okay. Didn't need to clean it. And I'm going to pick up some light permanent blue. And I'm going to pull some vertical lines down. Since my brush is slightly smaller than what I was working with, 
it's going to give me yet another shape. Showing, again, always adding interest to your composition. Okay. I'm going to need to keep this area a little bit darker than this area, and I just made it light, no problem. Just go back in with some brilliant blue, a little darker color, and go over that area. I'm going to turn my brush slightly horizontal, and I'm going to pull whatever paint I have on my brush across that skyline so it doesn't look like little soldiers. I'm getting close to my tree, and in some areas I'm touching it, and some I am not touching it, leaving that orange to peer through. That orange contrasts just brilliant, gives you such interest when you use a bright orange background in your paintings. All right, I'm going to fine tune all that up. I'm going to add in some, now I'm going to move on down to my foam. I'm going to add a little bit of Naples yellow to my brush, and I'm going to do these little Z-strokes, Z my famous Z-stroke, across. Now the Naples, now what has happened is the beach has moved up into the water. Now it's time to add some white to my brush, and I'm going to fine tune the froth. So here we go, doing our Z stroke, slightly touching over the blue that we have, the Naples yellow, and we even have a little bit of orange shining through. Take your time with this, because this is in your foreground, so you really want your shapes to be clearly full. You're going to bring the water all the way up to the rocks. So I want my water to touch my rocks. It's going to come in and move right into my rocks. And here we have, I took it all the way off the side of the canvas. Now, you never have, this is a secret, you never have something come right up to another shape. So we've got the shape of the foam, and then we've got the tree. We don't want it to appear to stop, this line appearing to stop at this line. So we want to go through, as if we're going through the tree, and just add some, do some mark making, add some marks to your beach as if the water is coming off the big waves. There. When this dries, it'll look a different color, and I'll need to go over it more. Layer after layer after layer until you can get your water to come right off the deep ocean or sea or whatever water is in your vacation picture, all the way up to the rocks. Okay, I'm still working in my foreground. Got my froth in. I've got to let this dry before I put another layer over that. So I'm going to go work on my trees. And I'm going to add a little bit more yellow into my hooker green. And I'm just going to touch the trees. This is just touching, touching what's already there. This is all dry, that's why I'm able to do this. If it wasn't dry, I'd be making mud. So take your time and give this a chance to dry in between your layers. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of my blue from the rest of my painting little bit of light permanent blue from my sky and I'm just going to touch the ends of my tree fronds okay and 
Again, this is negative painting. We're going back up into our tree. If that's wet, it's not going to work because it's going to draw green right into the sky. So only work in areas that are completely dry. What I'm doing is putting more shape into my tree by pulling the sky up into the fronds. This is a little wide over here, so I'm going to get some blue sky on my brush. Now I've moved over into the purple sky, so I'll pick up some purple and still go move up into my fronds. When this dries, that's going to look totally different than it looks now. So don't be afraid. There you go. And so you'll continue touching, touching, touching up your uh, area that's around your tree, always leaving some orange. You will leave orange till you're completely done. And then also you've got the orange peering through in your midsection. I'm looking here at my sky. Do I want to add a little more of white to my sky? And yes, I do. I So I'm going to get a nice clean brush. I'm going to add some white to that brush and I'm going to put some white strokes and I'm doing making marks. I want to leave those brush strokes showing that adds interest to your painting. I have my light coming in from this side, so I'm going to add white to my brush and just touch it. I can do this because the sky is completely dry. And work with your shapes. Take your time. Don't rush through this. I'm happy with that for now. I'm going to let that layer dry. And I'm going to look at my mid area. Now that it's dry enough, switch my brush back to my smaller brush. And I'm going to pick up some red and make some small marks, you know, small square marks in the front area of those buildings. I'm not going to do it all the way across. I'm just going to do it in this area on the left side that's right above where the sun is shining. Okay, and so I'm happy with that for now. And use do this in small increments, little at a time. Step away from the canvas. Look at it. Look at your painting. Do I like that? Do I not like this? That's how you make decisions. That's how you create fun, exciting compositions. This is now dry. My foreground is dry. So I'm going to add some white to my brush and I'm going to touch over the froth that I initially put in. I'm careful not to cover up too much of what I've done because those layers of color is what's going to make your beach exciting. Come right up to the tree so it doesn't look like I painted around the tree again. Remember you don't want the viewer to know what you painted first and second. I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin crimson into my rock. Just some marks. Make some marks with the alizarin crimson. And I'm going to keep not bother to clean my brush. I'm going to pick up some raw sienna. And now I'm going to make some horizontal marks. This is transparent raw sienna. You can use regular raw sienna as well. Whatever you have on your palette. And I'm going to make some horizontal marks on my base of my tree. I'm 
since I have a, some alizarin crimson left on my brush from layering my rocks, this is making for a very pretty color. So now I've given some interest to my tree by adding that raw sienna. The sun is shining and it's hitting my tree on this side. I'm going to take a, a bit of Naples yellow and white, mostly Naples yellow, and I'm just going to touch this side of my tree and then let that dry. That's where the sun is hitting the tree and I think the sun is peering through the tree, this first tree, and hitting this part of my second tree. Just a little bit. I'll let that dry. I'm going to put a little more white in that. Okay, now, now that I have my water done, I'm going to go back over to my rocks, switch to a angled brush. You can do this with any brush, but the angle brush is a little bit easier. I'm going to pick up some hooker green and alizarin crimson. I'm going to wet my brush. This brush comes to a chiseled edge. It comes to a nice flat chiseled edge, and that's why I'm using this brush. If you have another kind of brush that comes to a flat chiseled edge, you could use that as well. Now I'm going to create the grass. So I'm going to take my brush, turn it upside down, and that's because I'm left-handed. If you're right-handed, you're going to turn it till you get your brush straight up and down. All right, and now I'm going to touch my rock and I'm going to pull some grass. This is in the foreground, so the grass is a little bit larger. Now you couldn't do this until your water was completely done. If I don't have enough paint on my brush, I'm going to get streaks. You might want to practice making grass. Decide what brush you're going to use. And you don't want to do too much grass. You get so excited and you love making this grass, you end up putting too much in. So just do a small amount, step away, look at it, decide is that enough grass. All right, so um, now I'm stepping away from my canvas and I'm noticing that my grass looks a little bit drawn in. Uh, it looks like it's just growing out of the rock. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take my grass and I'm going to extend it forward all the way to the front of the canvas. And make some grass come from this area. Now my rock looks like it's behind the grass. It looks like there's some grass right in front of me. And it also looks like there's grass right around that rock area. I'm going to pull some more grass here in this front area. I'm enjoying this, so I think I'm going to make some more grass. Oops. Now what happens when you make a blob? It's okay, you're going to go over this with another color. Pick up some little bit of yellow and hooker's green. Same as you did with your tree branches. You're going to make a nice light green. And when this is dry enough, just slightly go over some of them, not all of them. I'm going to pick up a little white and blue, and I'm going to make a couple sprigs of grass that pulls my blue into my grass. Now this is subtle. The viewer is not going to say, gee, they have blue grass there. That little bit of blue and white on your brush is going to pull the color from the other part of your canvas into this front foreground. 
Now that this is completely dry, I'm going to add in some small touches and complete my painting. I'm going to add some red strokes. I've changed brush so I can get a little bit smaller strokes, tiny little strokes. Add a little red. I have some red flowers there. I'm going to pick up some blue, some violet blue, and I think I'm going to make the impression of very small flowers coming off the end of that rock. That's what you can do to add some interest to your painting. So have fun with that. Put in some accents. Put a little bit of accent right here on my small rock. Not covering up my rock, but just looking like there's some kind of vegetation growing off the front of that rock. I'm going to now add some grass around my trees. So now you can see that since I switched brushes, I'm getting a whole different type of grass. So that's an easy way to do that for yourself. I'm putting some, gra some grass right over the front of these tree stumps so it looks like the grass is growing in front of the tree stumps. You can take the grass all the way off the edge. You can leave it right here by your trees. That's going to be your creative energy that you're adding to your composition. So you have the basis of how to finish the tree now. I'm going to add just a couple touches of white to my palm fronds. where the sun is hitting the palm fronds. You don't want to overdo this. This is just, this is highlight. Highlight on the palm frond. The sun's hitting the palm frond there. Also, I'm going to, now that this is dry enough, add a little bit of Naples yellow and white, a little more to where the sun is hitting the tree. It's only hitting one side of the tree. So you don't want to make this area too big. So now you know how to create a negative painting with your vacation photo. Um, the images that you bring home from vacation can now translate into a positive painting that you can hang on your wall.